Hey, welcome to the first lesson here in data management. We're going to start talking about the first unit. We're going to talk about um, probability strategies. And the first learning target, we're really just going to look at simple probabilities. Uh, probabilities will get more complex, um, uh, but we're going to just look at uh, probability strategies. Uh, the purpose of today is really just to introduce you to the ideas that we're going to start to develop in class and really why we really care about this stuff. Um, so some of you guys have seen probabilities before. We're just going to watch. Uh, I want to start talking about casinos right away and gambling because that's going to be a big thing in this course is just to understand how casinos work and how gambling works. Um, and then really the purpose of that is to, to have a better understanding of gambling addictions uh, so that we can uh, make informed choices. Um, once you turn 18, casinos, uh, gambling is a... Is a I guess 19 for drinking age, but it is a, is a viable entertainment option, and we just need to be careful with it. So I just want to watch a couple of videos here that are kind of funny to watch to start this course off, and uh, we can talk about them. Good morning. Good morning, Jane. What's going on with you? Frank took me to Fallsview Casino on the weekend. They treated us like such VIPs. Got to burn off the free dinners. You know how it is. Not really. Don't say. This is an accurate portrayal of a casino. This is what happens. Uh, not the, the red carpet falling around the next day, but the idea that um, you do get free dinners. They do keep you coming. Like if you're loyal to the casino, it, it's fun. Um, there's just this feeling that like you're going to have a good time. They'll put you in a free hotel, but it does come at a cost. Um, where do lottery proceeds go? Um, so not only lottery, but this is also casinos. Um, the proceeds from lotteries, casinos, and slots go to provincial hospitals, sports, recreation, cultural activities, charitable organizations, nonprofit corporations, um, and so on and so on. Um, that's all well and good, but that, that does tell us something. Uh, casinos are definitely profiting from the money, like there is proceeds, and uh, this goes to the government. Um, it goes to the government to do good things, but um, we call that something when money goes to the government, and certainly we call that a tax. Um, the casinos are a tax. Uh, gambling is a tax that, that you can choose to pay or not to pay. Uh, just a warm-up question here. People get excited to go to casinos. They have the prospect of winning money. Uh, they say uh, they see all the people around them winning money and are excited to do the same. Often they remember the things that they that they the times they won and not the times they lost, and so they they do love going. But from a strictly financial point of view, how much do you agree with this? From a strictly financial point of view, casinos are a safe investment for the province. And why do you believe that? So, um, and so we're going to actually see uh, really what the answer to this would be. But but you can put down your answer for that. Just a quick uh, demonstration on how casinos work. We're just going to watch this video together. This is the story of casinos and how they work. The story begins with a bunch of people. Now these aren't just any old people. They are people with money. Now these people get a great idea. They decide to put all of their money in a pile. Now this pile is what we usually refer to as a casino. Some people also call it Lottery. Now, now at, at the, the casino, casino these, these people, people play, play games. games. Not, Not only that, that they get, get to push buttons, buttons on the machine that have lights and sounds. Sometimes, Sometimes the people, people even win the game, game and the machine makes really, really loud sounds. sounds. When this happens, it means, it means that these people, people get to keep some, some of the money from the pile. As, As you can imagine, this makes those people very happy. Everyone sees those people that are happy. And they, and they realized that putting the money, money in a big pile was really a great, great idea. idea. And they wanted money too. But, but the casino has a charge for making some people really happy. happy. After all, nothing is free. And the charge is the rest of the money. Which makes the casino very happy. It leaves no money 
for everyone, everyone else. else. But there, there is hope. hope. Because, because maybe, maybe someday, they'll, they'll be the one that pushes the, the button. button. That makes the bright light, light and loud sounds and they will get some of the money out of the pot. But, but probably not. Unfortunately, unfortunately this, this is the end of the story. I wanted to make sure that the credits came up there because I'm crediting that 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 viewer and so I feel bad he doesn't I, I, anyway <laughs> um, so I just wanted to like show you we're going to actually develop develop an understanding where that charge comes from and how that works and we're going to try to do it today but but we're definitely going to develop that understanding over the semester so what that is is the expected value of a game so a value that a game costs the operator per trial based on prize amount and probability. So the expected value is how much it's actually going to cost the casino to run the game. Um, so how much the value is to the client, to the customer, to the, to the person gambling, um, how much are they going to win each time? I just want to show an example of rolling two dice. Um, so we're going to pick a sum between 2 and 12, and for each time the dice are rolled, give yourself a point for each time you guess correct. And you may change the number of dice as the dice are rolled. So just want to get an idea of, of how um, of how like dice work. And so we're going to pick a sum between 2 and 12. You can run this by yourself. I just wanted to show you this website, though. It's called random.org. Um, if you go to random.org, there's a lot of different things you can do. You can roll two dice. If you roll the dice rather than actually rolling dice, we get a sum of 3. Roll again, you get a sum of, of 8. You roll again, you get a sum of 7, and so on and so on. So I just wanted to give you an idea of that uh, of that website um, where we can actually s s uh, simulate rolling the dice. Uh, so the question is, like, we just look at this dice chart, and so as we roll, the chances of rolling the first one are 1 to 6. The other one are roll, roll is 1 to 6. So you ask how many outcomes are there? And so you can see that there are there are 36 outcomes. Um, Was the probability of rolling seven? So it's these six out of 36. So there are six ways to roll a seven. Was the probability of rolling a ten? So there are three tens out of 36. So three out of 36. And why isn't five five counted twice? Um, so we look at five five, we get ten, but then um, but that's only one way to do it. So the reason why I like 4, 6, and 6, 4 is two ways is because there's different numbers on each dice. For 5, 5, if you turn it the other way and write 5, 5, it's still the same number on each die. It's 5 on both dies. So it's only counted once. You can see 3, 3 is counted once as well. That's why this chart's very helpful to show the 36 outcomes. So what about expected value? Uh, so there's a game where you win $100 if you roll a sum of 5. How much would you expect this to cost the operator if the dice is rolled 36 times? Uh, well, a sum of 5 comes up, and we're not going to do the, the dice simulation on this video, but we'll do it in class. Sum of 5 comes up 4 to 36. So what we expected value means is we'd expect to pay $400 in 36 rolls. Because four comes up or five comes up four times, and so we have to pay out a hundred dollars four times in thirty six rolls. If it's a thousand times, you'd have to think about that, and we would say um, eh, that's actually a tougher question to say about one time. But if it's four hundred dollars thirty six times per time, it's just like four hundred divided by thirty six. So if we take four hundred and divide it by thirty six that's how much we're going to be paying out each time and so that's what we expect to happen it might not happen in 36 but it will come more times in a thousand um, because we're doing it more often and so how much should the operator charge they have to charge more than that and if the, the game only runs three times and you roll a five then you're winning but it's not just you playing the game keeps running and it would run a lot of times. If it ran a thousand times, then they keep paying out only $400 every 36 times. 
if they're charging more than four hundred dollars for thirty six rolls, then they're going to make money. So the question is, does luck exist? This was actually a a, a, a friend of mine growing up in high school in this commercial. I guess you'd say my little street started at Falls View Casino, and so far there was no sign of it letting up. <laughs> Hey, Johnson, Johnson, I need someone to work like tonight. You're it. Oh, come on. You, you look exactly like a guy I've crushed on in high school. Really? What are the chances? So Falls View Casino is really trying to sell that idea of luck. That you are lucky. That you're going to get lucky. And so the question is, does luck actually exist? If you go back to our other slide, um, we talk about this. If it's a thousand times, the luck is going to iron out. Um, just some quick definitions. I don't want you to worry too much about this right now. We're, we're, we'll talk about this more. Um, Experimental probability is the number of uh, n is just it's a function for the number of items in a subset. So a so it's the number of times an event occurred divided by the total number of times we did it. Um, theoretical probability is almost the exact same thing. N is the number of times an event can occur, um, and then n of s is the number total number of times possible. So it'd th be thirty six in our case. Subjective probability is the probability uh, estimate based on intuition. It's the third type of probability. So there's experimental, which is what actually happened. So experimental trials. Theory is what we expect to happen. And then um, uh, subjective is, is what we uh, estimate to happen based on intuition. Uh, it often involves little or no mathematical data. It can involve some, like the weather is a subjective probability. It can involve some. The probability the Blue Jays make the playoffs is a is a subjective probability. It is based on what's happened, um, but it 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 does involve some intuition as well or some knowledge data as well. But but it doesn't. Um, it's not based on a theoretical probability. So here's some homework questions to practice. Tomorrow we'll, we'll continue with learning target one. So we'll continue to talk about this stuff. And we'll, we'll take a closer look at this notation. You can read it closer. Um, and uh, this is another question I wanted to ask. In, in my slides, I'll often put up another question. And it really makes you think in, uh, about the, um, the questions. I, I, sometimes I don't feel like the textbook gives us enough. And so we just go out for more questions. So you can read this question. If, if you had a game that pays $100, you draw an ace. Uh, how much should you charge people to play your game? And you can think about the example with the dice and, and really think through that um, because we did go through that relatively quickly. So uh, you can try this question to really think about it.